Hey guys, I'm going to show you some problems with the gauges on this diesel Suburban and uh, how we can re resolve them. You know, if I turn the uh, position to the on, you notice that the uh, oil gauge was sitting all the way over on 80 psi, and now with it just in the on gauge uh, position, well, we're waiting for the glow plugs to heat up. It's sitting at 40. It, it got like this because the gas gauge above it was kind of going crazy and moving around. I don't know if I'll be able to get it to do it again here, but I'm going to try and show you what's going on with the gas gauge when I start it up that led to, I think, um, damaging the uh, the oil pressure gauge. Let me start this guy up. You can see now the oil gauge just, you know, cruises all the way over um, in an unexpected manner. And I don't know if I'll be able to get the gas gauge to do what I wanted to show you here, but there it goes. You know, it just starts twitching around, and, you know, depending on the mood it gets in, there it goes. It just starts going totally crazy. And, you know, I'm not even moving at this point. I'm just kind of sitting here and it's just going totally crazy. I'm going to try and back up a little bit. And you know, it just kind of gets in these little twitchy moods. And what happened at one point is it, it twitched itself down and got caught on the oil gauge. And I think now they're both wigged out. So it's kind of a common problem, at least with the gas gauge. And let me show you how I'm going to try and fix this. So let me pause this so I can pull the uh, instrument cluster. Start to get the uh, instrument cluster off. We'll start by removing this trim shroud. Let's take a uh, plastic trim removal tool, or uh, if you don't have anything like this, uh, a gasket scraper with a towel over it, or even a, a large flathead would do. You just try not to scratch up your, your trim. And you just kind of go along the top and prizing off these clips that occur every so many feet or so. Sometimes it helps a little bit to open the cup holder a tad. And there's going to be one on the bottom here. the turn signal. Okay, now you're going to turn your key so that you can put your gear shift down into the first and then if you have it, tilt wheel all the way down. It'll make it easier to get out. You can turn the key off and then what you're going to do is just work it past the gear shift until you can get your hands behind here and depending on your truck, you're going to have a, a, a number of different options. You know, and the Suburban's got a, a lift back so there's wipers and a rear hatch if you had a pick up, it'd probably have a cargo light here, whatever. If this has got four wheel drives, there's things here. So uh, depending on what you've got, you're going to have to disconnect everything. So let me pause for a second. I'm going to go ahead and get all these various connections um, disconnected so I can take this piece off. Just a couple of words about some of these connectors. There's a variety of different connector types. Uh, most of them are just going to be these, these usual ones that you can either push in with your finger, or if you can't get your finger, you can get a, a, a flat bladed screwdriver or even the tool that we use to, to pull the clips. Uh, this is another variant here. It's got like a little piece on top that you can push down, but you actually end up having to stick a screwdriver uh, under the connector while you push down to pull it out. And this one's down here with the four-wheel driver, similar. This one on the end is just a standard little notch clip that gets grabbed by this guy right here. And you can just get a little screwdriver in there. Be gentle with it so you don't break it off and, and get it off. The next thing I'm going to do here, just really quick, I noticed, uh, you know, there's a collapsed clip here. This might happen, must have happened at some time in the past when I had this guy off to do some other repairs. So I'm just going to try to um, bend him back where he belongs, like so. And then we put him back on, you know, it'd be like the one over here. And then I also noticed this one on this side, just gotten a little squished. Probably also was not going in properly. Just a little bit of maintenance while we're in here. Does it take long? And then it'll hopefully uh, hold back on better when we put it back on. All right, so I'm going to set this up on top of the dash, and then I'm going to switch to a different tool here. So um, at this point, we've got everything out of the way, and this is our instrument cluster, and it's held in by four seven millimeter uh, bolts. And I'm just going to use a hand driver here with a seven millimeter socket and remove these four these four guys like this and after we take these four out there's really nothing holding this in uh, connector wise it just kind of um, sits 
here. Okay, for a second, get this out of the way so we can get in here a little easier. back up. Turn it off. I'll tell you why in a minute. I know it's really dark in here. Had to put the truck in the garage for this one. All right, so before I take this out all the way, here's another tip I'm going to tell you. So before you actually pull it, while you've got this out, it's a great time to check and see if any of the bulbs are burned out. And so what I'd suggest you do is when you turn it on and get all the indicators up, that you go ahead and take a picture and then you can remove this guy. That way when you get it out, if you see any that uh, don't match your owner's manual where you should have something lit up, you can go check out the bulb that's at that position and, and, and then go ahead and swap it out while you get everything is disassembled here when we get ready to work on these gauges. All right, once I get this last guy to come loose here, My reason it's a little hard is I don't want to have it drop down and disappear in the back and become a project to get it out. Okay, so just move this kind of harness out of the way. And with these guys removed and the tilt wheel down all the way, and we're going to have to get our shifter out of the way again. Just kind of slide it out to the right comes off all in one piece. This is all a unit that we're going to disassemble here. This is what I was saying to you earlier about the bulbs, right? So they're they're just sitting in these little twist-in sockets. Just take one of them here. It isn't so hard. I don't know why these guys are so hard. There they go. All right. And there's just like a 194 bulb sitting in there. Some of them are um, not replaceable, and some of them are. Can't remember which ones there are. We'll take a look at it when we get it out. But the ones that are not replaceable, you have to actually replace this whole thing as an assembly with the bulb and the connector together. Others, you just drop a, a new bulb in there like you normally would. All right, so we're going to take this uh, into the uh, workbench, put a towel down on it so we don't scratch anything, and we're going to start working it apart. The um, let's see if I can find them here. There should be some screws that are holding this guy on. I'll kind of examine it when I get some more light. I guess it's not some screw. Like, see here, they're clips. There's a clip here. And there's a couple of clips on this side. And I suspect that's what's holding our, our backing piece onto the front. But we'll go take it inside, and we'll go ahead and continue uh, taking it apart. We're also going to have to pull this little uh, plunger uh, knob off the top of the trip meter so that we can get the clear glass off of this guy. So, as you can see, now we took it off here, even disconnected. Um, one of the things we'll do is after we take the clear glass off, we'll note the position of the fuel gauge. That's the one gauge that uh, we'll want to note the position with that, without it being hooked up. The other gauges, like this oil gauge, is obviously off. This guy should be sitting over at zero. Certainly it will be at zero when you turn the, the key uh, to the on position on the ignition. Anyway, so we'll pick we it up this here. This side of the truck, this uh, cluster unit. So let's start disassembling it so we can get to these gauges. So the first thing we're going to do is remove this little rubber um, button that goes on top of the trip meter. The second thing we're going to want to do is get this lens and shroud assembly off. There's two clips on this side and, and one on this side. So let's see if I can get this off with my hand. Might have to go grab a, a tool or something to help. It's basically going to give it a push. This is off. Hold this one so I can get the other side to do the same thing. There we go. All right. Okay. So set this guy aside. All right. So the deal with these gauges is a little bit about calibration. A little bit of dust and stuff that gets in here. I'll clean this up as well. The tachometer and the speedometer and the oil pressure gauge get zeroed out when you turn the ignition to the on position. The voltmeter is self-evident, right? As soon as you give it power, it's going to measure whatever power it's getting. And the temperature gauge is going to measure resistance coming from the temperature sender. The fuel gauge is the only one that's going to hold its position. So this is the one we're going to mark. This is actually the one we're going to, you know, interested in changing anyway. So I'm going to take 
a little bit of tape here. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here under the needle and I'm just going to kind of eyeball where this guy was so that we can reposition it. Because the thing we're going to end up doing here is we're going to end up taking all of these switch guys off of here so that we can get this piece disassembled. And I got to kind of give some thought as to how that might how that might work. And then we're going to take off the needles from these two gauges. All right? So let me pause the video for a second so I can kind of examine this and see how it comes apart and then we'll come back. Okay, so um the ticket on this I figured out is to push the pins from the backs of these air core motors through these clips, right, until they come all the way through. So you can see the clips here, they don't have the pins in them. You can still see the pins here on the tachometer. So what I'm gonna do is I'm kind of hold the front with my finger while I push the tachometer the rest of the way through and kind of finish this off. You can't get at the speedometer. But what I'm hoping is that just getting all these other ones off will be enough to get him loose, and it is. Okay, so. So this is the deal here, right? So these guys here are your gauges. And what, what they have in this, this is a 99, and what they had a 99 back, and maybe even a few vehicles after 99, these are not stepper motors. These are air core motors. Same kind of old school gauges as you had back in the 60s, 70s, 50s, 40s, right? And what happens is the fuel gauge in particular is filled with a dampening fluid that goes, uh, goes over the years, and that's what gets the erratic behavior. So we're going to pull the um, needles off of these two guys, fuel and oil, and I'm going to do that just using like a plastic fork. Pretty sure that, yeah, they don't have any pressure at all. We mark the position of our fuel gauge with our tape beforehand. Just want to try and not touch any of the other gauges so we don't have this be a larger project than it already is. Okay, so we've got our two needles off, and now what we're going to want to do is remove these motors. They're held in with a Torx screw. Hopefully I'll have the size. Naturally, I don't have the right size, so let me go get a smaller Torx bit and we'll come back. All right, I got my T9 here, and I'm going to remove these two screws holding the fuel gauge. Into the assembly here. about that. This guy keeps kind of slipping out. All right, there's that one. And then we'll get the one on the other side. Okay. I'm just trying to take note of how it came out. So the writing is on this side. I'm going to show you why that's important in just a minute. Let me try to get these screws the rest of the way off of this mount. So when you go to get replacements of these, you can pick them up on eBay. They won't be yellow. They're going to be, in my experience, what I've seen, they're white now, cream colored. But they're the exact same thing. And each one of these gauges has a different calibrated motor. Again, these are not stepper motors. There's no gears in here. This is just a wire round air core motor. All right, so the fuel gauge one you can see here has a number F37, and date code and stuff like that. What's important is the F. We're going to replace it with a couple of gauges I picked up. Let me show you kind of the difference here, right? So it doesn't matter what comes after the F as long as it's an F. So here's a new F air core motor. Now there's a possibility that there, um, you know, will or won't be on your vehicle this little resistor 
This little piece here on the bottom, I think, is um, I think is a resistor pack. Might not be. No, no. Nope. You might have some resistors down here. In this case, there's nothing installed, just the brackets. And if it is, you have to transfer them over to the other motor. So it's real simple. You just take the um, the other one and you put it in where this one was. And I'm going to show you for a second here. I've got two, right? So this is the replacement for the fuel gauge. And then this other one that I'm going to do next right below it is a P. This is for the pressure, the oil pressure gauge. So they're going to have different, different letters on them. So let me go ahead and position this guy and get him back in. And then I'll show you right below it the oil pressure gauge. You gotta support this thing when you're pulling these screws out because the only thing really holding this up here is the um, lever for the odometer, or excuse me, for the trip meter. All right, so see, we take this guy out, and we can see he's a P, looks like a 1G or something, but what's important is the P for pressure gauge. And his writing was on this side. So get these screws off of here. Gotta take our new pressure gauge. Oops, hopefully we didn't damage anything. Nope. And P on this side, we're going to slide him back in. Put our screws in. And tighten them up. There's no torque value on this, you know, just get it snug. It's plastic, so you don't want to go crazy, you'll strip it out. Just want to get it snug where it's not subject to any vibration or rattling around. All right, now what I wanted to show you is on some of these other gauges, if we have the ability to see it, some light here. So right next to the gas gauge is going to be the voltmeter. And you can see, hopefully you can see the number on there starts with a V. It's upside down, of course, but there's a V at the bottom of there. And then this guy over here, he's our temperature gauge. And we can see on him it starts with a T. It's kind of self-explanatory. I don't know if we can see here, if you come on the other side, the speedometer has an S the writing here and then our tachometer can't really make out what's on him he's got an s as well could be i'm reading this guy wrong or it could be that they're both the same can't really tell it's upside down it's not a lot of light my point was that each one of these is going to have a code and when you go buy a replacement you just match up those codes, and that's all there is to it. So I'm just going to go ahead and kind of clean this stuff up. And by the way, the reason we pushed these out through these pins is so that we didn't damage this foam around these indicator lights. Otherwise, what would happen is we'd start getting bleed through. If we tried to use a screwdriver or something to pry this off, the illumination would bleed through, and you'd see these lights lit up all the time. So uh, let me pause it for a second, do some cleanup, and then we'll continue the reassembly. Guys, I, I wanted to show a closer view of these air core motors because as I watched the other video, I realized it wasn't necessarily that clear what these numbers were that I was referring to. So I'm going to see if I can get you a, a much closer view here between these guys. So here on the, this is the P I was talking about on the oil pressure gauge. So you see it's got a little arrow P1G and then the fuel gauge. So we can get these two guys right next to each other and cooperate here. Just bear with me a moment. There we go. And then here you see the fuel gauge has got an F on it, F37. So these, these are those codes I was talking about. And you'll see other letters and number, other numbers rather. But this is the, the F for the fuel gauge, the V for the voltmeter, the P for the pressure gauge. That was what I was referring to uh, on that. And then again on the back side, 
uh, looking for you. So when you see the new motors, they'll be open like this, you know, hence, you know, you can see through them, they're air core, right? But that um, resistor pack that sits on here, that's another thing to keep an eye on. So anyway, I just wanted to do another shot of this because it didn't come out so well. Guys, as I was cleaning up, I realized that these, these guys on top here are the resistor packs I thought they were. I was just expecting to see something more conventional. And so I just uh, slowly worked them off the pins of the old gauge or the old air core motors. And the reason that, um, i trying to find something with a little bit more leverage here. Get this last piece off. All right. On the new motors, there's this little notice that says if you have a resistor pack, you have to transfer it over. Uh, otherwise, uh, the, the gauge might not work correctly. And so that's what I believe this is. So just taking careful note here. So this is the fuel gauge. And from the fuel gauge's position, like this, this just lifts up and transfers in just like that. And that would now complete the installation. So at this point, I've, I've cleaned off these bulbs. And another thing I did is, is before I took everything out, as you guys know, I, I took a shot of the um, lights to make sure that they were all working. And I, I see that I'm all good there. So now I can reassemble this guy. And so what we're going to do is we're going to push these pins back into these mounts. There's an alignment pin over here to help you with it. I just want to try and do it without touching the other gauges. Okay. All right, at this stage, we've got everything reassembled. sure everything fits nice and snug. I'm going to take my fuel gauge needle and I'm going to line it up and just position just on top of the meter and I'm going to line it up with the tape mark I made. I'm not going to push it on all the way because I'm going to wait till we put it in the truck and make sure that it stays there because if it doesn't I can readjust it. And similarly, I'm just going to kind of aim the oil pressure one over towards zero. I'm just going to push it on just a little bit. And then I'm going to get inside the truck, power it on. I'm not going to put the front lens on so that we can get these adjusted and snap them in. And then we'll put the front lens back on. So let me pause and we'll go do that. All right, I've put this guy in without the lens. I'm going to turn the key. You can see the oil gauge kind of jump down. So I'm going to take him off. And I'm going to try to eyeball him in to zero a little better. Hardest part of the whole thing. All right, so now he's on zero. Turn the key off this way. Turn the key on. Boom, he's on zero. All right, so this guy I'm going to push on all the way now. If I put him up here and I turn the key, he goes to zero. Might be a little bit off. I might adjust him a little bit. And our gas gauge. Looks like he's off a little hair from the mark we made. So I'm going to do the same thing with him. Take him off. Turn the key. Let the gauge kind of do its thing. And then I'm going to come in here and try to get this guy lined up again from the mark we made. settled in there and I think he's okay now. So at that point we you know we kind of could be done but if I'm going to do all this work you know I don't like that guy being off a little bit here so I'm going to go ahead and do him again and kind of initialize him. I'm going to come in here try to get him right on the 
zero. Got the steering wheel in my way. Just bear with me, guys. There it is. Dead on the money. Dead on the money. Go ahead and push him in all the way. Okay. At this point, I'm going to take it back out. I'm going to put our, our lens back on. Actually, I'm going to clean the inside of the lens. There's a little bit of dust in there, too. Put it back together. Pop it back in here. Put our four bolts back in. And, and put our front... Um, excuse me, our front trim piece back on and I'm gonna take this piece of tape off because we're done. So I hope that helps you out. Again, these are AirCore motors. You can find them at least on eBay. You might be able to find them on AliExpress if you want to take a chance getting them from China. That's probably where they all come from anyway. And you just gotta make sure you match the codes on the back, the letter codes, F for fuel, P for pressure, V for voltmeter, like we saw. Whatever you had there before, match it. And if you've got those resistor packs like I did, Make sure you follow the directions that come with the, the, the air core motor kits. If not, you know, take the tip from the video here and transfer those guys over. Be very careful with them. They're fragile. They're tin ears. And then the middle piece is a, looks like it's ceramic. So be very careful with it so you don't break it. And that should get All you right, guys. I just wanted to do a start up here and show that everything is working the way I expect it to. I'm going to kind of shut her off here. see uh, everything's just kind of holding now when I put the power on my oil pressure gauge goes exactly where I expect it to down to zero so that guy's working great and I'm gonna just wait for my glow plugs it's kind of cold here this morning I'm gonna kind of let those guys cycle before I try to turn it over again just to make sure I get a good start here just bear with me a moment because this is a diesel engine vehicle All right, and my gas gauge is not freaking out anymore. It's kind of holding right where we want it to. So I think that's the problem, right? Originally, I tried to check all the grounds, and those were, you know, I cleaned those up, but that didn't do anything. And I was about to pull the tank and put a new sender in it, but I decided, you know, if it does this kind of wigging out while you're not even moving, it's not likely to be the sender. So it turns out to be the air core motor for the gauge. I hope this repair helps you guys out too. If you have any questions, just uh, drop them in the comments. I'll try to help you out. Otherwise, please like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.